Liebe de, liebe de, liebe de, liebe de, take your bodies to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust, trust and never doubt, he'll surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it. Everybody leave it there, leave it there, leave it there, leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust, trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your body to the Lord and leave it there. If the world from you withhold of his silver and of gold, and you have to get along with me, the fear, what remember in his word, how he feeds the little birds, Take your body to the Lord and leave it. Leave it there now. pain and your health you can't regain and your soul is almost sinking in despair Jesus knows the pain you feel he can save and he can heal take your bodies to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there, leave it there. Leave it there, leave it there. Take your body to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. When your enemies are still, when your enemies are still, and your heart begins to fail, don't forget that God in heaven answers prayer. He will make a way for you and will lead you safely through. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there.
yo youth full day sagan and old age is cheering on and your body bends beneath the weight of care he will never leave you then he'll go with you to the end take your burden to the lord and leave it there leave it there leave it there take your burden to the lord and leave it there if you trust and never doubt he will surely bring you out take your burden to the lord and leave it there showers of bless showers of blessing we need Mercy drops wonders of falling, but for the showers we shower, shower, showers, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we Mercy drops round us of falling, but for the showers, everybody sing it out and shout, showers, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need, mercy drops. Mercy drops round us of falling, but for the showers we now there shall be showers of bliss. This is the promise of love there shall be seasons refreshing sent from the savior above showers 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 of blessing Showers, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops, mercy drops, crowded of falling. Showers, showers, showers. Was a blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops, mercy drops round us up for falling, both for the showers. Showers, 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 showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops. Falling, falling, but for the showers. Showers, showers, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. 
need mercy drops round on Sappho falling but for the showers we there shall be showers of blessing precious reviving again over the hills and the valleys sound of abundance of rain showers of blessing Shouts of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us upon But for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing. Send them. Send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now honor thy word. Shall us bless. Shouts of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us falling, but for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that you did he might fall. Now, as to God, we confess him. Now, as on Jesus, we call. Seasons refreshing if we let God have his way. Showers of blessing, showers, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us upon but for the showers we showers, showers, showers of blessing, showers of blessing. That's what we need. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. 
I had need of thy answer provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands are provided. Great. Great, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Everybody sing, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided great. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will. Pardon for sin and a peace that endures. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. 
blessings all mine and ten thousand beside great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all i have needed thy hands are provided great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, on to me, how wonderful, how Marvelous this, my song shall ever be. How wonderful, how marvelous is my Savior's love for me. Yes, how wonderful, clap your hands, ah, marvelous this, my song shall ever be, how wonderful, how marvelous is my Savior's love for Everybody, how wonderful, how marvelous this, my song shall ever be. Yes, how wonderful, how marvelous is my Savior's love for me. Sing aloud, how marvelous. How wonderful is my song shall ever be. How wonderful, how marvelous is my Savior's love for the last time. How ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior's love for me close your eyes and praise the Lord for his marvelous grace and marvelous love and for the great things he wants to do in your life it also blow away every mountain out of your life. Destroy every work of the devil in your life. It also leave you up, lift you up so much. You'll be far away from all those problems, obstacles, heartaches. Difficulties. How marvelous, how wonderful. This my song shall ever be. How wonderful, how marvelous my Savior's love for me.
accept the love. Perceive what that love brings to you. Was it to be a happy Christian, a lovely Christian, a blessed Christian, a satisfied Christian, a fruitful Christian? A Christian that is free, free from all the entanglements that bind the faithless. And he wants you to enjoy your relationship with him. Wonderful, marvelous. This your testimony should ever be. Wonderful, marvelous, your Savior's love for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come this morning and we come before you. We come because we know you are Father indeed. A Father of mercy and love and goodness and grace. Mighty and powerful. And with you all things are possible. Your children, your people come to you this morning expecting that you are going to blow and roll away every mountain from every life. That you are going to remove sickness and affliction and suffering from everyone. That you are going to manifest your creative, redemptive power to bring marvelous things down into the life of everyone. Your people come to the believing that every problem in their families you are going to solve. And Lord, we pray that today will be the opening of the heavens for everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, our invitees, our members, our workers, our leaders, our ministers, and pastors and overseers, oh Lord, I pray, open heavens for everyone in Jesus' name. Surprise your people even with what they are not asking you. So that, Lord... In every session in this retreat, great will be the joy of God's people in Jesus' name. Lord, stay with your people. Bless your people. Turn everything that is wrong around. That your people be full of joy in your presence. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hear you clapping like you are in the local government. This is headquarters church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. God bless you real good. You can sit down. This morning we come to consider the word of God and we're talking about the power of God. And as you think about the power of God, how powerful is God? How mighty is God? How great is God? With what measurement can you measure the power, the might, the greatness of God? What can God do in your life in a moment of time? During this period, we are gathered together in the presence of this mighty Creator. What can He accomplish in your life? The power of God. In Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? He was asking Jeremiah. Jeremiah was looking at the condition of his own personal life. He was looking at the condition of the national life. He was looking at what he had heard coming from all the other nations. And then he was wondering about this, this, and that. 
And then the Lord confronted him with a question, like he's confronting you today with a question. You look at your life, your personal life, and the things that bother you, and the things that concern you. And you think about the spiritual aspect, you want to rise higher, you will rise higher. And you look at your family, yourself, your husband, your wife, your children. And you look at the condition of this, this, and that. And the Lord then confronts you with a question. Why are you so worried? Why are you so anxious? And why is your heart beating? Are you not a child of God? Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? You look at the work you're doing. And you look at the prospects and the problems. And you, you seem to think only the people of the world can make it in this world. But this earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This is your father's territory. And then you seem to wonder if things are like this. I go this way, there appears to be a closed door, I go this other way, and there appears to be an insurmountable problem. And if the Lord comes to confront you now with a question, why you are thinking of the various barriers and stumbling blocks and hurdles in your life? And he says, Behold, I am God, I am the God of all flesh, is there? Anything in your personal life? Is there anything in your family? Is there anything in your work and profession? Is there anything in your surrounding? Is there anything that is too hard for me? You look at the ministry that the Lord has committed into your hand. The suppose or ministers. When I say ministers, I mean all those who are involved in the uplifting, the expansion, the enlargement, the establishment of this great ministry of preaching the gospel with whatever title you may have. And you look at the challenges you face in ministry. And before you kind of almost roll over and give up, the Lord says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there any challenge in the ministry that you meet? Is there anything too hard for me? You look at a long-standing problem. A long-standing heartache, a long-standing problem that almost brings confusion. And then, before you give up and just say, I'll manage that, I'll tolerate that, I'll stay with that, I will endure that, I'll take that as my cross. Before you do that, the Lord says, consider not your power, consider not your strength, consider not your might. Consider my power. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power. Behold, thou hast made the heaven. And the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. I don't think that Jeremiah was a scientist, but as an ordinary man, he looked around and he looked very far, and then he walked some distance and he looked very far again. And it looks as if the world does not have an end. He looks at the sky. And as he looks at the sky, this great umbrella. And it looks as if the umbrella, the sky, does not have any measure, any limit. 
He looks at night in the stars. And he started counting and he lost count. And he looks at the sun during the day, shining bright, giving sunshine to the whole world. And he said, Ah, Lord God, when I consider the heavens, the works of your hand, and I consider how expansive the sky is, the universe is, the galaxies are. And he says, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth. Then he comes near, and he looks at every flower. And he looks at the beauty of every flower. And he looks at the symmetry of every blade of grass. And he looks at everything minutely. And he sees all those symmetrical things. And God has taken so much interest that for small things, he makes them perfect. And for great things, big things, he makes them perfect. He said, what am I worried about? And Lord God, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm. He picks up a butterfly. And he looks at him from the development of the cocoon until it comes out so beautiful and fine. And he looks at all the colors. And he looks at the matching that God has made. And he looks at all the birds that fly. And the rabbits and the, and the great animals that walk on the land. And then he said, oh Lord, when I consider this, the creation is almost infinite. The speeches are almost infinite. And then I look at my own life. What am I worried about? Our Lord God, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power. You didn't have any assistance from man. You didn't have any support from man. You didn't have a counsel. That will follow up and follow through on the action plan. All, the Almighty God did everything by Himself. And He said, That's enough for me. He said, There may not be a council that will be able to have some action plan on the areas of my life. But this Almighty God has done everything all by His own self, all by His power. And he said, now I can rest, and today you will rest. Now I can relax, today you will relax. And he said, ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. Definitely, absolutely, without any shadow of doubt, there is nothing too hard for thee. There is nothing in heaven. There is nothing on earth. There is nothing in his life. There is nothing in his nation. There is nothing in the nations of the world if God decides to do it. There is nothing too hard for thee. It's for that we understand the power of the Lord, the power of God. As we look at the message at the verse of three parts, number one, the wonder of God's unlimited power. The wonder of God's unlimited power. Number two, the weapon of God's unfailing power. The weapon of God's unfailing power. Number three, worship at God's unshielded presence. Worship at God's unshielded presence. Number one, the wonder of God's unlimited power. As you look at the power of God, and you try to measure that power, try to estimate that power, 
while you're almost finishing your estimation, then you remember there's something you left out. And while you bring that one in, then there's something else you didn't remember. And then you give up, you say, you cannot measure this. You cannot evaluate this. You cannot tell. On what scale you're going to measure this because the power is literally unlimited. The wonder of God's unlimited power. Matthew chapter 19 verse 26. Hear the words of Jesus. If anybody knew how great the power of the Heavenly Father is, Jesus knew. And Jesus has left this on record for us. Matthew chapter 19 verse 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are, everybody, possible. When you pick up a problem, when you think about a problem, when a problem confronts you, when it brings fear, worry, anxiety into your heart, when it scatters your brain, and it appears there is no solution, and you go to men that are reputable for solving those kinds of problems, and you say, we have never met a problem like this. And Jesus now says, whenever you meet anything that with men is impossible, then you bring it to God. Because with God, all things are what? Possible. This morning as you come before the Lord, and you try to think, what in my life? Have I counted impossible? What am I trying to give up? And I'm saying, there's no point wasting my life on that. That's literally impossible. On this child, one of your children, it is no point being fussy about this, about this matter. And the mother comes to the father and he says, you know, daddy, look at this child. All the force, all the argument, all the correction, all the counsel, all the effort, all the finance, everything we put on this matter. The problem is not solved. Why don't you give it up? When you come to a situation that you have found impossible, that the family has found impossible, that your people around you have found impossible. And then you've sent that child to another place. Let me help me take care of this. And yet, he returned the child and he said, spend your money in another direction. This is an impossible case. When you come to something like that, bring that case to God this morning. I said bring that case to God this morning. With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And you think about every area of your life, the challenges you face, and the things that kind of intimidate you in your life. And you think to say, Lord, just help me, help me to bear this, because looks like there will never be a solution. This morning, a solution has come. Because of the wonder, the wonder, the wonder of God's unlimited power. Job chapter 5. In Job chapter 5, here we find the testimony of those who have followed through, examining, evaluating, finding out about the power of God. Job chapter 5 verse 8. I would seek unto God. Unto God will I commit my cause. Why will you take a decision like that? 
that you will look unto God, you will seek unto God, and unto God will you commit your cause. When you look around, and the men or the women that wants to help, you discover vain is the help of man. They want to do their best. But their blessed produces a blanket that will not cover you, cover you in, the cold, in the cold night. They want to help. But their help is so limited. And they come to their very limit. And they come to you. And from the look on their face, you can tell what they want to say to you. They want to say, Honestly, sincerely, we have tried to help you in this matter. But this looks like it's beyond our training and experience and skill and ability and power. Then you seek unto the Lord. That's why here it says, I will seek unto God. And unto God will I commit my cause, which doeth great things and unsearchable marvelous things without number. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, you don't have any reason to give up. You don't have any reason to be anxious. You don't have any reason to be fearful because this is the God that does great things and unsearchable immeasurable, marvelous things without number. It will convince you this morning. You know, sometimes you have those advertisements that says, one trial will convince you. This morning, the Lord will convince you. When He removes that mountain out of your life, when He solves that problem in your life, and when He makes seemingly impossible things possible in your life, he will convince you that he does great mighty things, unsearchable, immeasurable. In Job chapter 9. Job chapter 9. I'm reading from verse, uh, reading from verse 4. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. You know, if somebody is wise, but he doesn't have power, yes, he'll go a little bit far, but not far enough. And if somebody is mighty and powerful, but he's not wise, he might do some things, but he will not go as far as necessary. But when wisdom and power Wisdom and might, when you combine together, that's awesome. That's great. That could be terrific and terrible. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who has hardened himself against him and has prospered. What this scripture is saying is, while you are bringing your case to God on the way, when you are coming, you just remember that so and so said on my dead body for you to be able to have that breakthrough. And then your hands sat down. And then the Lord reminds you, don't mind what he has said. He will never say anything more than what Pharaoh said. He will never be able to go as far as Nebuchadnezzar went. And those kings that hardened themselves against the program of God for his people, against the project of the Almighty for the seed of Abraham, all those people found that they could not Harding themselves against the Almighty and still prosper. Therefore, keep on coming. Bring your case to the Lord. The Lord will solve the problem. All those people that threaten you, that accept you worship their idol, 
you worship their God. All those people that search, fast all you can, pray all you can. As long as we're here, you will never be able to make it. I want to announce to them and announce to you this morning, you have made it already. Because it says this almighty God you come to, awesome in power, great in power, he is wise in heart, and mighty in strength, who has hardened himself against him, and has prospered in verse 10, which doeth great things past finding out. Which doeth great things past finding out, yea, and wonders without number. Wonders without number. You are entering into a new stage of wonder walking experience. Wonders. You go to the right, there'll be wonders. You move to the left, there'll be wonders. And as you move into the new year, there'll be wonders in your life in Jesus' name. Wonders, wonders, wonders for the rest of your life. Because you have, because you serve a God, a God that will never, never fail. Psalm 77, verse 11. Psalm 77, verse 11. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely, I will remember the wonders of old. What does that mean? I will remember their, your wonders of old. What it means is this, anytime I have a problem, I will go back to the record, the history of the people of God, and see the problems they had. And I will bring their problem that God solved by His wonder-working power, I will bring the mountain that God dissolved by His omnipotence. I will bring the great problem that couldn't be solved, that the Almighty God solved for them. I'll put it on one scale of the balance. Then I will put my little problem that is causing me anxiety. I'll put it on the other scale of the balance. And then I will tell myself, as I remember, the wonders of God of old. See, he solved this great problem that is almost 100 times my own problem. My little problem then will fade into insignificance. Look at that verse 11 again, Psalm 77. I will remember the words of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. Verse 12, I will meditate also on all thy work and talk of thy doings. The more you talk about it, the more you are strengthened. The more you talk about it, the more you are empowered. The more you talk about it, the more you are energized. When you think about the miracles of God, when you think about the power of God, when you think about the marvelous things that He did, and then you say, Look at what God did. You pick up Abraham and see what God did for him at the age of 100. Sarah at the age of 90. And you see this impossible situation that the Almighty God solved. And then you meditate on what God did for Jacob, Jacob and Esau. And after 20 years, the hatred and the bitterness was still there. And then Jacob did everything he could do. And he sent people to Esau. And he came back and he said, We don't know how you will handle this. Because he's coming with 400 valiant men. 
And then he took himself unto God. He abandoned every other sin and then he waited on the Lord. And then in just one night, the Lord solved such a great problem that had aroused the heart, the mind of Jacob. And so you meditate on the works and the wonders of God and you talk of his doings. Don't talk about your problem. Talk of his doing. When you talk about your problem, the problems increase in your mind. The problem is still the same size, but the more you talk about it, the more it increases. And the more you meditate on it, the more it will increase in your mind. But you talk about the doings of God, the deeds of God, the wonders of God, the power of God, the manifestation of the greatness of the Almighty God. I will remember the words of the Lord. I will remember. It's a determination. You know, sometimes when problems come, those problems almost make you to forget every other thing. The goodness of God, the promises of God, the power, the might, the strength of God. But deliberately, you make up your mind and you recall the great things the Lord has done in Bible days and in contemporary times. And then you say, I'm going to meditate. You're not going to meditate on the problems, you meditate on the things of God, on all thy work. And I talk, you talk on thy doings, for searching thy way. O oh God is in the sanctuary, and who is so great a God as our God. It makes you to know how great God is when you meditate, when you think, when you turn it over in your mind, the greatness of God. Then in verse 14, thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. The Lord this morning will declare his might in your life in Jesus' name. Because we wonder, wonder. At the great manifestation of the power of the Almighty God. This is the weapon we need. This is the tool we need. This is what you need that will solve the problems you have. The power of God. Point number two. The weapon of God's unfailing power. As you look at the world in which we live. Almost everything has the tendency to fail. As you look at all the gadgets that human beings have, and the gadgets that human beings use, almost all things have an inbuilt weakness to fail. But there is one thing that never fails from the day of creation until this time, thousands of years. There is something that never fails and that is the power of God, the weapon of God's unfailing power. Adam and Eve found that to be true. The power did not fail. Abraham found that to be true. The power did not fail. Jacob found that to be true. The power never fails. Moses in the wilderness. Moses before Pharaoh found that to be true. The power never, never, never fails. And Joshua in the land of Canaan. He found that to be true. The power never fails. And David on the battlefield of the Philistines. The power never fails. And then you come to the New Testament. And Jesus went about doing good. Because he was anointed of the Holy Ghost and power. 
And then God was with him, healing all the oppressed of the devil. The power never failed. You find John and Peter, Peter and John, at the beautiful gate. And you saw that man that had been born paralyzed. The power never, never fails. There comes Saul. Going from Jerusalem to Damascus, the power that blew him down, and the power that turned him around, that power never fails. Many things will fail in life, but we serve a God that has an unfailing power. And that power will work in our lives in Jesus' name. The weapon of God's unfailing power. We're looking at Second Corinthians chapter six. Second Corinthians chapter six. I'm reading from verse one. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. What does that mean? We as workers together with him, we operating in cooperation with him. What will that mean? Come back to Moses. Moses had the rod. God has the power. And God said unto Moses, now remember we are workers together with him. And Moses was walking together with the Almighty God. You don't need to feel the power. The power resides in God. And because the power resides in God, throw down the rod, Lord, if I throw it down, what if it doesn't become what I thought it will become? Walk us together with God. Do you do your part? I'll do my part. Walk us together with God. You do the simple. Throw it down. I will do the hard, tough, impossible thing. I'll turn it to be a serpent. Walk us together with God. Here now, they came to the Red Sea. And the Red Sea was in front of them. And the Egyptian army was behind. And then if you studied it well, the mountains were on the sides. And the Israelites did not know how they would escape. Walk us together with him. Always the human being, the minister will do the simple. And then God the Almighty, he will do the mighty impossible thing. Stretch your rod and you stretch the rod. That's all you do. You're walking together with God. You're not the one to do everything. God will do his part when you do your part. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you that you don't receive the grace of God in vain. It's like telling Moses that you don't receive the rod in vain. That you don't keep the rod in your hand in vain. Do the simple thing with that rod and then stretch it. And then the Almighty God open the Red Sea. The Lord will do it. I said the Lord will do it. You mention the name of Jesus. That's all you do. That's all you do. You do your part. And then the Lord will do what you couldn't have done. Just mention the name of Jesus. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And then it goes on now and it says in verse 7, By the word of truth, by the power of God. By the word of truth, by the word of God. By the armor of righteousness. On the right hand, and on the left, the ammo, the weapon of the word of truth and the power of God. This power will do something today. Roll mountains away today. Destroy the words of the devil today. And set you free today in Jesus' name. 
2 Corinthians chapter 10. Reading from verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. What does that mean? For the weapons of our warfare are not human. The weapons of our warfare are not fleshly. The weapons of our warfare are not natural. Because I told you already, every natural sin, every fleshly sin, every carnal sin, every common sin, every created sin, every earthly sin has deterioration embedded in it. That means then, if you depend on natural, earthly, carnal, human, created sin, it will fail. Because it, you know, it might work for some time, but it comes to a point. Every created weapon is limited in its effectiveness. But now it says, for the weapons of our warfare, and not carnal, but mighty through God. The weapons we have, the armor we have, the power that comes to our age, it says it's mighty through God to the pulling down of strong holes, casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. You are wondering what that means. You know, so go back to Genesis chapter 6. Don't open, I'll just tell you. It says, every imagination of the thought of the hearts of the antediluvian people, the people before the flood, it was evil. And as you look at humanity, you'll find that maybe there's an enemy in your locality. And he doesn't have any other thing to do, but he centers all his, all his attention on you. He doesn't have any goal, anything to achieve in your street, in your community. And he centers all his attention, all his resources on you. And the imagination of his heart is that he'll bring you down. Never mind, you have conquered him already. The imagination of the heart. Have you thought about Lucifer? The imagination of his heart. I will, I will, I will. Many times. But there is a weapon that will cast down all the imaginations and the heart of Satan. All the imagination in the heart of sinners. All the imagination in the heart of the wicked people. And then when God has brought down, leveled, destroyed, demolished, destroyed all the sins, the Lord will lift you up. Casting down imaginations. Now, your own imagination. Your own imagination. There's a little sickness. And then you sit down. And you are thinking, there's sickness. And then as you begin to think, and you begin to make your conclusions, it is not the sickness that is weakening you, it's your thoughts, your imagination on the sickness. And you are, some, you are kind of calculating, this has happened, I feel this symptom, and I hear this sound, and I see this effect, and I feel this pain, and I know this is what had happened to all the people before that had a sickness like this. And those imaginations, they are the things that almost destroy your faith. But there is a weapon here this morning. The unfailing power of God will cast down all the imagination in your heart in Jesus' name. Casting down imaginations and Every high sin that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bringing into captivity. Bringing into captivity. Look up here. And you know, sometimes as you look at the history of the people of the world, and you look at how things go, you'll find sometimes the powers that be, 
they will pick up a man. That man is a threat to them, a threat to their government, a threat to their progress, a threat to their ambition. They pick him up and then they find this reason and this reason and that reason and then they put him in captivity in the cell and he's in the prison there and then they might say they calculate how many years they want to remain on that throne and be leading and be ruling and they calculate that you know if they are in their fifties now if uh, you know they will change this and change that in their nation in their country they might be able to live up to 80 and if they're going to live up to 80 that means they need 30 years of no molestation therefore they pick up this man and then they put him in the prison and they might say he's going to be in the prison for 40 years but they are thinking by the time he comes out they would have died and then they will rule for life and then have you seen the history of the world how things will change and the man that puts the other fellow in the prison that man then is out of power and the one they put in the prison that man comes out of the prison and then he even becomes the captain of the people and then becomes the king or the leader or he becomes the president of the country and then he turns around and he looks at that man if he's not dead yet and then he brings him into captivity that's what the bible is saying here look at it yourself casting our imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity if you are brought into captivity before the tables are turning the things are changing you will come out of that captivity and all those that put you in the captivity it is now their turn I said it is now their turn I don't know what music, uh, all the presidents in Babylon at the time of the reels. I don't know what kind of music and party they were having in the night because they now got rid of Daniel. They have brought Daniel into captivity. All through that night, didn't I tell you, didn't I well, get that man? Didn't I tell you, well, incarcerate that man? Didn't I tell you, well, bring him into captivity? You know, it's, it's, you know it's, it's running too fast and it's getting too much promotion and then we well, did imagination our imagination now incarcerated him and then all of a sudden in the morning the king rose up and he went to the lion's den and with a lamentable voice he cried Daniel, Daniel, it's your God whom you serve day and night. He's able to deliver you out of the mouth of the lion. And Daniel shouted back, you will shout. I said you will shout. He shouted back, he said, oh king, I am still here. The God of heaven, his power is unlimited. His power is unfailing. He has sent his angels and he shot the lion's mouth that they could not hurt me. He said, Daniel, servant of the living God, come out. Today you will come out. There is a power in heaven that operates on earth for the people of God. He came out and then they examined Daniel. There was no hurt in him. He only went on vacation when he was in the lion's den. And then they said, now all the princes and all their families, please come here. And they came and then it was their turn. It was their turn. The people that put Daniel in captivity, it was their turn to come into captivity. Never mind, you have conquered. Never mind, you have overcome. Because there is the wonder of God and there is the weapon of the unfailing power of the Almighty God casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God 
I'm bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And therefore the power, that same power today will work in your life. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54. And I'm reading there from verse 17. Here is a special gift for you coming from your father and coming to you. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. And what the Lord is telling you is, you should think about the weapons of warfare that the Gentiles have. The weapons of warfare that the natives have. The weapons of warfare that all those sorcerers, all those witches and wizards that they have. And then see your own weapon, the weapon of God's unfailing power. And then as you see, their own weapon of wickedness and their own weapon of the world. As you see, their own weapon of evil. And then you see your own weapon, the very power of God that will never fail. The power of God in your life will destroy everything coming from the world in Jesus' name. That's why it says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. How those magicians of Egypt, how they came with force. How they came with determination. This Moses, what does he make of himself? Well, deal with him. He doesn't understand that we have something. They had something, but not something will be swallowed up. I said it will be swallowed up. And so they came. And as they came, Moses told Aaron, throw that rod now. Let Pharaoh see, because he's asking, show me a sign that says that God has sent you to pick out and to take out the children of Israel. Show me a sign. Give me a sign. And then he threw down the rod. It became serpent. And then the Magia said, we can do that. We can do that. We can do that too. And we came here to confront him. And he threw all of them, threw down their rods, became serpents. What did the serpent of Moses do? Swallow them up. Swallow them up. And then they lost all their power. All the people that want to use any power against you, they lose all that power. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And the righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Luke chapter 11. Luke 11, reading from verse 20. In Luke 11 verse 20, but if I were the finger of God, that finger of God, that's the finger that molded man, that's the power of God. And if I, by the finger of God, or the power of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. Verse 21, Luke 11. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace, but when he's stronger than he, come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted. And divided his spoil. With the power of God in your life. 
He has something greater than the people of the world than they have. And this day you have overcome. Ephesians chapter 6. Reading from verse 10. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. There's no other way. You cannot be weak in the Lord. There's no other alternative. You cannot be timid in the Lord. There is no other possibility. You cannot be fearful in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. All you need to do is to be in the Lord. Have His grace in your life. Have His, have his truth in your heart. Have His power on your side. The grace, the truth, the love. The power gets into everything. And when you are in the Lord, you become strong. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand, stand against the wild strategies, maneuverings, imaginations of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Isn't that what makes people afraid? Because you forget your armor. And you're looking at their armor. Because you neglect your armor. What I mean by neglect is you don't train yourself to make use of your armor. But you see those people of the world, they train themselves to make use of their armor. And because of the training they give themselves using their armor over and over, that's why it looks like their armor is powerful. It's their training. If you will train yourself, put on the ammo, and then train yourself in the use of that ammo. You see what it says? It says, you put it on, you'll be able to overcome and stand against all the wiles and the maneuverings and the strategies and all the imaginations of the wickedness of the devil. The wickedness of the devil. But we're still not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against wicked spirits or spiritual wickedness, in high places, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day. In the evil day, you'll be able to withstand. And having done all to stand, you don't run away anymore. You don't abandon your duty post anymore to stand. Stand, therefore, having your lawyers got about your truth, and having on the best plate of righteousness, and your feet short with the preparation, proclamation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench, how many darts? All the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication of all for all saints. Today our victory has come. Number one, the wonder of God's unlimited power. Number two, the weapon of God's unfailing power. Number three, worship at God's unshielded Presses. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. Acts, chapter 16, verse 25. 
The background story here is that Paul and Silas were in captivity. But they will soon come out. And they're sending Paul there this morning. And the people at Philippi put you in captivity. And last night, you couldn't sleep. And then you're saying, how long will this be? It's come to an end this morning. Any Silas there? That all through the night, you were thinking, you were meditating on the challenges of life. And then you began to look into the history of your life when you were young, when you went to school, when you came out of school. And you're saying, I've never gotten anything on a silver plate. It's always with sweat and tears. How is it like this? And then you drag yourself to the faith clinic this morning. Welcome. I said, welcome. Worship the Lord. And as you worship the Lord, you are going to find all the yokes are broken this morning in Jesus' name. But as Silas, they were catch in the prison. They are left in the stalks. Their hands in the chain. And then they were sitting down on the bare ground. But their mouths were not changed, were not padlocked. And their hearts still rest up. Hallelujah, glory, praise to the Lord. And so it says in Acts chapter 16 verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, and suddenly, you will not know when your chains will fall off. And suddenly, you will not know when the problems will be solved. And suddenly, you will not know when the violence will quit. And suddenly, you will not know when your enemies will be paralyzed. And suddenly, you will not know when the prison doors will open wide. And suddenly, you'll not know when the miracle will take place. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately, all the doors were opened. And everyone's bands were loose. Just by worshipping. Worshipping God at His unshielded Presses. We're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 20. Just worship the Lord. And in the worship of the Lord, you'll find our yokes are broken. How sicknesses are healed. How impossibilities become possible. How the afflictions and the attacks are taken away. How the sterility and the barrenness will move away. How miracle babies will be given as a gift. How blind eyes will open. How the lame will rise up and begin to walk. How your child with inability or disability that he was born with, how that disability will vanish away. Just worship. And as a worship, you'll find a miracle is there already. In Second Chronicles chapter 20, reading from verse 20. And he rose early in the morning. We're not the first people to rise up early in the morning to worship the Lord. He rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe as prophets, so shall ye prosper. You will prosper. When he had consulted the people, he appointed singers 
unto the Lord. And I shall praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. And to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. The singers made the army unnecessary. The singers, the worshippers who are leading in praise worship, they made all the weapons of the army of Jehoshaphat unnecessary because they went before and then the army came behind and it says as they were singing, as they were worshipping, as they were praising the Lord, saying, Praise the Lord, for His mercy endureth forever. It was a chorus. Praise the Lord, and His mercy endureth forever. It was only one line. Praise the Lord, and His mercy endureth forever. And the minds were thinking of His mercy. His mercy in the time of Abraham. His mercy endureth forever. His mercy in the time of Israel. His mercy endureth forever. His mercy upon the people in Egypt. His mercy endureth forever. His mercy at the Red Sea. His mercy endureth forever. His mercy when He brought them out, there was not one sea. Seek among them his mercy and dureth forever. Just one line. Praise the Lord and his, for his mercy and dureth forever. And when they began to see, that's worshiping the Lord. When they were worshiping and to praise the Lord, set ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir. And when they were come against Judah, they were smitten. They were smitten. They were smitten. They have their faces on the ground. Your enemies will lick the dust. Because now you worship and there is power. Power in praise. Power in worship. In Psalm 22. Psalm 22. I'm reading from verse 3. In Psalm 22. Looking at verse 3. Here it says, For thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. He inhabits the praises of Israel. And as you worship the Lord, you not forget about your problem, because they are solved already. Forget about the enemies, they are conquered already. And forget about your sickness, you are healed already. Stand up and praise God for your healing. Stand up and praise God for your deliverance. Stand up and praise God for the miracle. You have got it already. As you are singing, as you are praising God, rejoicing before the Lord, all their pants were loose, all their yokes were broken, all their enemies were defeat, defeated and destroyed, all their problems were solved. All your mountains are dissolved. All the heartaches are removed. All the challenges. Bring them before the Lord and praise the Lord. What a glorious thing this morning. He has delivered you already. You are set free. You come to receive from the Lord this morning and He has come to give unto you. You come to receive from the Lord this morning and He has come to give unto you. Wonderful and marvelous is the love of God for you. Wonderful and marvelous is the grace of God for you. Wonderful and marvelous is the mercy of God for you. Wonderful and marvelous is the power of God in your life. You are free. You are not sick anymore. You are healed. You are not oppressed anymore. You have been set free. You are delivered. The lack is supplied. The need is supplied. The difficulty is taken away. There is a power coming from heaven. Unlimited power. Unfailing power. Immeasurable power. Coming to solve your problem today. Irresistible power. Coming upon your life. Sets you free. You are healed. You are delivered. The mighty power of God has come to set you free. Rejoice in the sight of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. For He sets you free.
wonderful freedom, glorious freedom. What a wonder, what a glory. What's up today? This weapon destroys all those powers of the enemy. It sets you free. Praise the Lord for that. Glorify His name for that. In Jesus' name we pray. If you are free and free indeed, in Jesus' name we pray. If your enemies are knocked down to the ground and they're licking the doors and you are standing and you are standing in strength, praise the Lord. If you know the hand of God is touching you right now, the might of God is with you right now, your sicknesses are taken away right now, impossibilities are becoming possible right now, praise the Lord. Raise up your hand and rejoice. Have you ever clapped your hand above your head? Above your head? Above your head? Above your head, above your head, where are the enemies now? Where are the difficulties now? Where is Satan now? And where are the agents of Satan now? Where is your sickness now? You are free in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you today that we can rejoice in your presence. Tears are wiped away. Sorrow is taken away. Sicknesses are cancelled. Impossibilities have become possible. The roadblocks are taken away. The hurdles are taken away. The barriers are no more. The mountains are no more. Before the children of God, no mountain will stand in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I know you've done it already. Lord, I pray, touch the lives of your people. Thine eyes be opened in Jesus' name. Those who are left paralyzed, I send the power of God into your body. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. And those who are deaf and dumb, I pray, the mighty power of God will touch your deaf ears and your long tongues. Speak out and hear in Jesus' name. And those who are barren, no more barrenness. No more barrenness. No more barrenness. Oh Lord, give the miracle children in Jesus' name. Those who are sick, touch them and heal them. Take all their pains away. Take all their infirmities away. And bring joy in the place of each in Jesus' name. Provide for all the needs of your people. Cancel failure, cancel defeat, cancel fear, cancel sorrow, cancel all those things that bring worry and anxiety. Release your people by your power this morning in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, confirm the miracle. Miracle on the left, miracle in front, miracle on the right, miracle at the back, miracle in every location. Miracle, miracle, miracle upon everyone in Jesus' name. We will receive, O oh Lord, and give all the glory and the praise to you now. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Now the states are waiting for headquarters, clapping and rejoicing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And those of you in the states, put your hands together. And then I can imagine, I can almost hear you the way you clap in the states and the region and the nations. 
the blessings of God will overflow in every life today in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Now you can enjoy your blessing as well as your breakfast. Praise the Lord. God bless every one of you.